about the phylum tenophora so they are commonly called as comb jellies so the phylum tenophora will be discussing about which are commonly called as comb jellies or sea walnuts we also call it as uh, so that you have to remember about so phylum tenophora is closely uh, related and similar to uh, the cnidaria okay so that is one thing that you have to uh, remember about so the characters the general characters or salient features of phylum tenophora as i have already told you they have a similar type of characters as that of uh, cnidaria so the grade of organization is tissue grade of organization you find in case of tenophora so they have radial symmetry okay so the germ layers they are diploblastic they have two layers outer ectoderm and inner endoderm in between they have this uh, jelly like material found <laughs> in mesoglea okay the coelom is a coelomate they do not have a coelom coelom is absent so now if you look into the habit and habitat so the tenophorans which are also commonly called as comb jellies or sea walnuts they are exclusively marine okay and they are solitary and pelagic so they are exclusively marine and they are solitary and pelagic okay so that is their nature of it so they are found in the open sea that is what we mean by pelagic and it also can undergo long distance migration so whenever we are talking about pelagic they also can undergo long distance migration so the digestive system is an incomplete because they have a single opening which acts both as mouth and anus so the digestion is intracellular and extracellular so it takes place within the cell and also outside the cell the digestion takes place even though they do not have a complete digestive system okay so the respiratory system and circulatory system is absent so they are directly by diffusion they are having this uh, exchange of gases and other things so the reproduction so they are only sexual reproduction takes place so they are hermaphrodites bisexual that is they have both male and female uh, so reproductive structures are found in the same organism and they exhibit only sexual reproduction there is no asexual reproduction they release the gametes into the water so the fertilization is external the fusion of gametes takes place in water and development is indirect they also have a larval stage so the development in case of tenophora or this sea walnut or comb jellies they are also indirect so the unique feature that is noticed in tenophora is they show bioluminescence generally bioluminescence is seen in organisms which are found in deep sea okay so the bioluminescence they emit light so the unique feature here is they exhibit bioluminescence locomotion is by eight vertical external rows of ciliated comb plate that is the reason they are also called as comb plate jellies or sea walnuts so they are having eight vertical external rows of ciliated comb plates are there so you can notice here eight vertical uh, external rows of ciliated so they have cilia ciliated comb plates so tentacles are present you can notice this tentacles but they have this eight external vertical rows of uh, the ciliated comb plates tentacles are present they exhibit bioluminescence these are the unique features of them and examples that you have for this uh, tenophora is tenoplana and pleurobrachia are the examples for uh, the so it is very easy to remember teno uh, tenophora tenoplana is the example pleurobrachia is the example for tenophora so these are the two organisms that you have as an example so now when we look into the unique features the locomotion is by these diagrams are not required as i have told you they are just for understanding purpose so locomotion is by eight 
vertical so you can notice this eight vertical the external rows of ciliated comb plates so you can notice this eight vertical external rows of ciliated comb plates so they have enlarged this comb plate okay so tentacles are also present you notice this two tentacles here so you have this eight external row of vertical external row of comb plates with ciliated comb plates you notice here they have tentacles so the uh, tenophora they have the ability to emit light from the body so this phenomenon is called bioluminescence so the tenophora have the ability to emit light from the body so this phenomenon we call it as bioluminescence so phylum tenophora example pleurobrachia this is the example of pleurobrachia in your textbook this is the diagram that they have given for this uh, tenophora so the teno pleurobrachia this is what is the example and tenoplana it is almost bell shaped structure with eight external vertical row of ciliated comb plates okay the next phylum that we'll be studying about is phylum platyhelminthes okay phylum platyhelminthes they are flat worms as the name indicates platyhelminthes are flat worms so what are the general characters of this platyhelminthes so they have an organ and organ system the grade of organization in platyhelminthes before that let us also know the examples of the platyhelminthes flat worms tapeworm is an example then liver fluke or fasciola hepatica see tapeworm scientific name is tinea solium liver fluke you can notice here the cursor are placed on this liver fluke they are seen in the livers of goat okay so the liver fluke so they are flattened dorsoventrally flattened so the tapeworm you can notice they are all examples of this flat worms then you also have this uh, neris which is also example for this uh, platyhelminthes or the flat worms okay so let us proceed with understanding the characters of it so their grade of organization is they have organs and organ system so their symmetry is bilaterally symmetrical you can divide this organism into two equal halves in only one vertical plane so you can divide this organism into two equal halves right and left halves in only one vertical plane so they exhibit bilateral symmetry so they have three germ layers that is the reason they are called as triploblastic for the first time you notice triploblastic animals they have three germ layers outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm so since they have three germ layers they are considered to be triploblastic animals coelom is absent just like in case of cnidaria and tenophora even in platyhelminthes phylum platyhelminthes coelom is absent so they are acelomate habit and habitat mainly aquatic like neris is aquatic then there are endoparasites so some of them are like uh, liver fluke tapeworm they are all endoparasites found within the host not externally internally they are found found within the host some of these uh, flat worms they are free living okay digestive system is again incomplete because they have a common opening for mouth and anus so they have a single opening for mouth and anus so the digestive system is incomplete respiratory system and circulatory system is absent the reproduction is asexual fragmentation they break into fragments they can develop into new uh, organism and sexual reproduction is also noticed they are hermaphrodites or bisexual so in case of tapeworm in case of liver fluke you find that they have both male and female reproductive organ in the same organism so we call it as hermaphrodites or bisexual fertilization is internal so it takes place within the body so they have internal fertilization development is direct and they have many larval stages okay so development is indirect so they have many larval stages so they require primary host secondary host especially the parasitic forms so the development is indirect many larval stages are 
noticed in case of this flatworms. So the reproduction is asexual by fragmentation and sexual reproduction is there. So the uh, organisms, majority of the organisms in platyhelminthes, they are hermaphrodites or bisexuals. That is, they have both male and female reproductive organs in the same organism. So fertilization is internal. Then development is indirect. They have many larval stages. Okay, so the unique features of this phylum platyhelminthes are they are unsegmented. They don't have any segments. Dorsoventrally flattened body. Dorsoventrally they are flattened. That is why we call it as flatworms. So the dorsoventrally flattened body except tapeworms. So excretion is by uh, flame cells. So the excretion unique features we should know. Example it is not except. So example, dorsoventrally flattened body, example, tapeworms. Excretion is by flame cells. See, excretion in human beings, it is by kidneys, isn't it? But there, in case of platyhelminthes, they have this flame cells, which we call it as protonephridia. The parasites have hooks and suckers in their head region. You can notice this hooks and suckers, which helps them keep attached to the host intestinal walls, especially the tapeworm. And even the liver fluke has the hooks and suckers. It is a parasitic adaptation to hold on firmly to the walls of the host cell. Walls of the host they hold on to. So they have this hooks and suckers. Some of them absorb nutrients from the host through their body surface. So they absorb nutrients from the host through their body surface, some of them, some of the flatworms. So the unique features, unsegmented dorsoventrally flattened body, example tapeworms, even they are dorsoventrally flattened bodies. So the except tapeworms, they are not dorsoventrally flattened, but they are flatworms, okay? So the uh, this is the liver fluke, nearest, they're all dorsoventrally flattened. Unique features, excretion by flame cells the excretory canals you can notice so these cells are called as flame cells so these diagrams are not required just for your understanding so how they are distributed the flame cells which bring about by excretion excretion is nothing but removal of nitrogenous waste so flame cells are also called as protonephridia so this is the flame cell a typical flame cell which is found on the body okay so unique features, they have this hooks and suckers. They hold on to the uh, body of the host. So they have hooks as well as suckers. Some absorb nutrients from the host through their body surface, okay? So they absorb nutrients from the host through their body surface. Tapeworm, which is exhibiting hooks and suckers. Tinea solium, tapeworm scientific name is Tinea solium. Example, Tinea solium, the pork tapeworm. So improperly cooked pork meat allows the infection of tapeworm even in human beings. So the improperly uh, cooked pork meat is a source of uh, tapeworm infection. Then fasciola liver fluke. This is also a parasite. So it is found in the uh, liver of goat or sheep. Then planaria, it's a uh, non-parasitic form. So these are the examples that you have to remember about in case of the phylum platyhelminthes. So the next phylum that we'll be studying in the next class that is phylum ascalminthes or roundworms that we will be studying in the next class. So you have any doubts or clarification students? <laughs>